Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Oshile and you're watching Oshi Reads. And this book haul, oh god, I feel, I, I want to say I feel ashamed saying this in 2021, the year of my book buying and no spend ban, no spending, no buying, whatever you want to call it. But um, I strangely feel liberated saying this. <laughs> These are the only books that I bought this year so far since I like cracked down on my no spend year, no buy year, whatever you want to call it. So I don't really think that I've jumped off the deep end here, but I bought these books back in February. Yes, February. And yes, it is now April. And I now feel comfortable sharing them with you. I've waited a long time. I needed to get over the guilt and the shame, but not shame. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So I have them all in this bag and I will say that I bought secondhand books from Thrift Books and this is going to be a romance novel haul. Old school romances. A lot of these romances I read years ago, either as an adolescent or young teen growing up and I just want to revisit them and I'm, I'm having like nostalgia and vibes and I just want to own these books. And so I went on thriftbooks.com and found secondhand copies. So they delivered a whole bunch of them in this kind of presentation. So let's begin. First package here, but I try to open it on camera so you can feel the anticipation with me, but it's not, it's not working out. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, it's open, it's open. So there are three books in here. Three books. Let's start. The first one is Force of Nature by Suzanne Johnson. Suzanne Johnson is a historical erotica romance writer that I really, really loved when I was growing up. She, she writes very explicit erotic sex scenes in her books, but she also has a lot of interesting characters. And her men are very alpha, borderline, no, not borderline, definitely chauvinistic misogynistic tendencies very problematic who women tend to be either one of two you know the virgin the virgin the madonna i almost said the vagina monologues hmm the madonna whore complex where her heroines are either very um naive and virginal and but always always independent and headstrong headstrong or they're very like independent worldly, um, know their own mind, and outliers for their time and history in terms of their independence and autonomy. So it's interesting stuff. But anyways, Force of Natures, it says back here, some, di some desires can't be denied. Raised by her mother in Bohemian Italy, free-spirited Joe Attenborough's modern notions of a woman's role frequently land her in hot water but nothing like the heat she experiences under the penetrating gaze of a mysterious man. I have to read it like this because it's a romance novel. Like, you kind of have to make fun of it a little bit, even though you love it. Some hungers are beyond control. His mother, Irish, and his father, a samurai, oh lord. Flynn Ito has the spirit of a warrior and a reputation as a dangerous man. The reclusive cattle baron protects what's his and what he wants to present, I can't even say it with a straight face, and what he wants to possess more than anything he's ever known is Joe. Some temptations are impossible to resist. <laughs> they never should have met, but when their worlds collide, every desire will be granted, every forbidden pleasure explored, and every temptation will make an act of war into the sweetest surrender. This is gonna be problematic as hell. I can't wait. The next one, just brace yourselves for these old school bodice ripper covers because that's one of the reasons I went to thrift books because I needed these original covers, honey. We have A Rose at Midnight by Anne Stewart. <laughs> I'm living! <sighs> okay, A Compelling Tale of Passion and Revenge. You'll love it. I read a lot of Anne Stewart back when I was in high school, so I'm revisiting her books. This one is problematic. 
we should just call this the problematic romance book haul. That's what it's going to be called. A Rose at Midnight. Once a daughter of the aristocracy, lovely Gisseline or Gilly de Lornay lives for the destruction of Nicholas Blackthorne, the notorious freak she holds responsible for the cruel loss of her virtue, family, and fortune. Now that the rogue has re-entered her life, she seizes the opportunity to enact a poisonous revenge, but is abducted. Oh my god, not an abduction story. <laughs> Who was I as a teen? But was abducted by the dashing villain before the deed can be done. Held prisoner, oh no, in a secluded hunting lodge, she steals herself to resist the sensuous punishment her captor has promised. Oh dear only to be betrayed by her heart that aches with desire for the handsome, tormented blackguard. <laughs> for once in her enemy's arms will Gilly know the exquisite passion that can heal all wounds and the rapture of a love powerful enough to restore a fallen woman's honor and a scoundrel's nobility. Ah, I feel like I can just pass out into a fainting couch right now. Old school style. Um, the problematic romance book call. Mm -hmm. And then we have Dara Joy's High Intensity. I used to be obsessed with Dara Joy. I had discovered her in college and I just was obsessed. But um, this background, back cover description is very vague, but it says, join the most sizzling provocative physicist to ever solve a case or heat up a bedroom and his equally passionate partner as they investigate the perfect equation for love. Tiber and Zanita invite you to come along for their madcap sensual journey into high intensity. All I would have to say is I highly, highly enjoy Dara Joy. She's very like, madcap is a perfect word for her. Her books are very, I can't think of the right word. It's like hijinks. There's like romance and love, but it's also like super over the top, super overblown, super inflated, but I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Night of a Trillion Stars is my favorite by her about a woman who gets abducted by this alien guy and taken to his planet. This haul is gonna be long as hell. Next package, I'm gonna open it on camera but I'm also trying not to cut myself and or show my address. But, oh, here we are. Two books in here. Let's begin. The first one I'm really looking forward to, I read it back in high school. It's called Ice Storm by Ann Stewart, so another Ann Stewart book. And she writes like suspense, romantic suspense, which I haven't read in years. The powerful head of the covert mercenary organization, the committee. Isabel Lambert is a sleek, sophisticated professional who comes into contact with some of the most dangerous people in the world. But beneath Isabel's cool exterior, a ghost exists, haunting her with memories of another life. A life that ended long ago. But Isabel's past and present are about to collide when Seraphin, mercenary assassin, and the most dangerous man in the world makes a deal with the committee. 17 years ago, Isabel shot him and left him for dead. Didn't see that coming. Now it looks as if he's tracked her down for revenge. Another revenge plot. But Isabel no Isabel. <laughs> but Isabel knows all too well that looks can be deceiving and that's what she's counting on to keep her cover in this international masquerade of murder. <laughs> I can't wait. This sounds amazing. Again, these are rereads, but I read them so long ago I can't remember any of them. I can't wait. Ah, I spoke too soon, y'all. It's Night of a Trillion Stars. The one I was telling you about, about the woman that gets abducted. Let's Let's read the synopsis. <sighs> Fired from her job, starting off so well, exhausted from her miserable Boston commute, the last thing Deanna Jones needed when she got home was to find an alien in her living room. <laughs> Spicy. But how else to explain the magnificent man who claimed he was from beyond the stars? He said that his name was Lorgen. I never could figure this out when I was growing up. Was it Lorgan or Lorgen? Lorgan and Lorgen. Lorgen sounds more like, ooh, Lorgen. But it also sounds like it could be some type of like pulsating, oozing puscular disease. <laughs> wow. Let's go with Lorgan. Lorgan, 
He said his name was Lorgan and that he, she was part of his celestial destiny. Deanna thought his reasoning was ridiculous and she knew he was making an error of cosmic proportions. But his touch was electric and his arm strong. And when she first felt the sizzling impact of his uncontrollable desire, the desire is always uncontrollable, Deanna started to wonder if maybe their passion wasn't written in the stars. <laughs> I can't wait to get back into this because I just remember it being just like so campy. That's the word. Campy, but in the most enjoyable way. And I just wonder if I still feel that way years later. Can't wait. Okay, this next one is a rather large package. Looks like it's more than three books in here. So let's go. Ooh, I almost broke my nail. Not good. Mm -mm. right there were one two three four five books in this one five five <laughs> oh my god number one we have again and again another Suzanne Johnson so it looks like it's the mist of a blizzard Caroline Morrow's coach is way late at an inn on the outskirts of a small village and she's actually happy at the unexpected stop because she gets to be in the warm fire but then a voice from the past sells a, sends a chill down her spine so Lord Simon Blair emerges from the shadows still handsome still powerful clearly they have a past so apparently they recollect their sensuous, 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 sensuous affair. Um, so apparently they had an affair and it ended badly. So he was um, unfaithful. These dogs, they always know the best moments. Not now, y'all. Not now. Not now. Not now. We're talking about unfaithfulness and adulterous affairs. Please. Please. Give me a moment. Who wants to go in the crate? Nobody? Nobody? Okay. So he cheated on her basically during their affair and then she got married to somebody else. So she's now divorced and she's basically penniless and she cannot hide how she's basically penni penniless from him, right? It's obvious that she's like <laughs> destitute, poor, you know? So um, it's awkward. It's awkward that they're meeting like this. So they spend a night playing cards and they spend the night, you know, doing, you know, doing the zoo. And so that, you know, turns into another affair, basically. But now Caroline has to make her escape. So she basically tears herself away from Simon. She's on her way to her new employer. She takes up a position as a governess with her new employer. Oh, my God. Only to learn that her surrender to Simon has whetted his appetite for more and the chase is on. Okay. Um... All right, let's see how she's gonna turn this around. You know, he did cheat on you in an adulterous affair during your first affair, and then you got married to somebody else, so. But now y'all are, we'll see how Suzanne Johnson turns this around because I'm not seeing it right now, but I'm sure the sexy, sexy scenes are gonna make up for the, um, me not being able to forgive Simon for being an asshole the first time around, okay? Next up is Cold as Ice by Ann Stewart, another Ann Stewart, I think it's a series. And so I just decided to buy them all, you know, they look very series-esque. Yeah, it's on the back. They have like all the books on the back. My focus might be off, but we have Ice Storm and then we have Cold as Ice. And this is another romantic suspense. Never get in the way of a mission. The job was supposed to be dead easy. Hand deliver some legal papers to a billionaire philanthropist, Harry Don... I can never talk in these videos. Harry Von Dorn's extravagant yacht, get his signature and be done. But Manhattan lawyer Genevieve Spencer soon realizes she's in the wrong place at the wrong time and the publicly benevolent playboy has a sick, vicious side. As he tries to make her his plaything for the evening, eager to use and abuse her until he discards her with the rest of his victims, oh my dear, Genevieve must keep her wits if she intends to survive the night. I don't know if I want to read this. This sounds very PTSD for me. Ooh, triggering. Oh, 
but there's someone else on the ship who knows the true depths of Van Dorn's evil. Peter Jensen is far more than the unassuming personal assistant he pretends to be. Ooh, a little Clark Kent Superman action. Hmm, a little hero in disguise. He's a secret operative who will stop at nothing to ensure Harry's deadly rule of seven terror. Oh my gosh. To ensure that Harry's deadly rule of seven terror campaign dies with him. But Genevieve's presence has thrown a wrench in his plans, and now he must decide whether to risk his mission to keep her alive or allow her to become collateral damage. This is going to be interesting. It might be, I don't know, like if you're sensitive to stuff like this, I wouldn't recommend it because it sounds like it's really going to go there. My focus is just like off in this video. Sorry, guys. Hopefully you can see that. The next book is another Dara Joy. This one is mine to take. And um, I'm not going to read the back. I'm not, I'm not going to read the back. Another Dara Joy. All right, so... This is giving me all the feels. I love these covers. Anyone else love these covers? I remember being young and being terribly embarrassed to be seen reading books like this because I was young and I wasn't supposed to be in that supposed to be in that section, you know? It's like people judging you when they see you reading a book with this cover. And then going on into college, also being embarrassed to be on the subway in New York City reading books with this cover. So I read them at home, or when I got a Kindle, I was safe to read them on my Kindle because nobody can see the cover. And now I'm a grown ass woman and I'm obsessed with covers like this. It's like complete opposite now. Anyways, another Ann Stewart, to love a dark lord. To love a dark lord. To survive, Emma Longlet has committed a shocking crime. Okay, so she had to commit a crime to survive. I mean, women throughout history have had to do what they had to do, okay? Patriarchy, misogyny, etc. But to her amazement, the notorious scoundrel James Killeran has agreed to accept responsibility for her desperate act, though the handsome Irish Earl professes no interest whatsoever in the enchanting miss whom he surely rescued from the gallows. Okay. Hurt and confused by his indifference, Emma is nonetheless drawn to his elegant, arrogant, drawn to this arrogant, take three, drawn to this elegant, arrogant rogue who uses people for his own amusement but is always there when she most needs him this sounds like a toxic relationship in the making this is also going to be triggering <laughs> for she believes killer and hides true goodness behind his decadent facade that's your mistake girl when someone shows you who they are believe them but this is a romance novel so you know he's probably a good guy but you know in real life take my advice um, and only the power of love can restore hope and tenderness to a dark and damaged heart and release the passionate lover imprisoned within. Mm. If only it worked like this in real life. But normally when guys are assholes and show that they're not interested in you, it's true. They're assholes and they're not really interested in you. But you know, in a romance novel, we get to live in an alternate reality where that's not the case. Another Dara Joy. Another one where I didn't know how to pronounce his name, which is also the title of the book when I was growing up. Growing up. Oh, God. Why was I reading these books? When I was in college, I didn't know if it was Rejar, Rejar, Reji, Rejar, Rejar. We'll go with Rejar because that's kind of what I said in my head. And now it's hard to change it. Um, but yes, Rejar. This is kind of in the whole trilogy with a, the Night of a Trillion Stars. They're connected. It's connected to this book. Um, Rajar is a shapeshifter and he can turn into a cat. It's very exciting. That's all I'm going to tell you about that one. All right, so this video is getting entirely too long, so I'm going to wrap it up with the next last two packages. I'm going to open up this one for you. We have, oh, not my address. A good three books in this one, all with the old timey covers. Another Dare Joy, Tonight or Never. Fabio, right? Right? Fabio's on the cover. Or Fabio's cousin or twin brother. They called him Lord of Sex. Oh, she just comes right out with it. He was a rake, a rogue, a libertine, and a scoundrel. With his wicked sense of humor, keen intelligence, and charming ways, the Viscount Sexton, there is no subtlety whatsoever. None! I don't know whether to laugh or just be embarrassed. It's a little cringy, but um, it's Dara Joy and her campiness is undefeated. 
The Viscount Sexton was an expert in the art of seduction, but little did he know his days of debauchery were about to come to an end. For Chloe, determined little Chloe, intended to have him for her very own. She wanted him forever, and now she just have to get the stubborn devil to realize that they belong together. Sounds like a stalker. Stage five clinger. But again, in a romance novel, it's, you know, not that, but in real life, it is that. This juxtaposition is so interesting. Anyway, and the feisty redhead had the perfect plan to do it. For what could be better than beating Don Juan at his own seductive game? Problematic romantic book haul. We have Bertrice Small's Darling Jasmine. Bertrice Small is a legend, okay? Legendary, legend. Dairy. <clears throat> Set against the pomp and pageantry of 17th century France and England, Darling Jasmine continues the exciting saga of Jasmine du Morisco, Sky O'Malley's headstrong granddaughter. Okay, so Bertrice Small has his whole books about the O'Malley's. You had to be there, you had to know. Um, yeah. <clears throat> In a story filled with intrigue, and adventure, and erotic passion, Jasmine had been forced into marriage twice rebelling at King James's decree that she wed Jemmy Leslie, 5th Earl of Glenkirk. She fled to France with her children, but her youngest, the illegitimate offspring of Jasmine's hot-blooded lover, Prince Henry Stuart, the mess. Bertrice Small brings the mess. That's why I love her. <clears throat> illegitimate offspring of Jasmine's hot-blooded lover, Prince Henry Stuart, is the king's only grandson. Now time is running out on Jasmine's ideal of freedom coming for her and her little boy is the man she both fears and desires. Whew. His anger white hot, Jemmy Leslie has come to France to possess Jasmine by force if necessary. Problematic. Once they shared a night of unforgettable passion, but her rejection of their betrothal, the betrothal, betrothal, <sighs> stunned and maddened him. Yet once he sees her again, Jemmy vows to win the elusive Jasmine back to take her beyond ecstasy. Cringe, cringe city, but oh my God, the mess, the mess. It's worth it for the mess. Another Dara Joy, this one is high in high energy. Just gonna show you the cover because we have to move on. Now I have the final package. Oh my God, we're getting to 24 minutes here. The final package, I'm gonna open it quickly here. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Ooh. More Ann Stewart. Looks like the last of the series. So we have Fire and Ice. And we have Black Ice. And y'all can go read the synopses if you want. But it looks like I have all of the Ann Stewart series. I don't know if this is the completed series, but probably damn near. I don't even know what order it goes in. There are four, four books on the back here, and I have all four of them here. Then let me show you my Dara Joy collection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, I went in, I went in. I just really loved her books in, in college and I think I saw them all on thrift books and I was like, you know what? You know what? I need them back in my life. My Dara Joy collection. Six books. So four Ann Stewart, six Dara Joy. Oh no, I forgot this. Five Ann Stewart, it's not part of the... <gasps> six Ann Stewart. And Stewart's beating Dara Joy right now. It's not part of the series. All right, so we got six for Ann Stewart. Oh no, they're tied, six and six. And then we got two Suzanne Johnsons. These are the tamest covers. And one queen, messy, messy, Bertree Small, queen of the mess. Okay, I just feel like y'all are just seeing glare, and I'm sorry for that. All right, 
So we have six, six, that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 books in all in this haul. And I'm gonna try to hold them all up for y'all. I know, I know, it's a horrible idea. I'm gonna do it anyway. you guys could have seen that they all just so we got dare joy and ann stewart oh got bertrie small and suzanne johnson hi thanks so much for watching let me know if you've read any of these it's problematic they're all problematic I cannot wait bye y'all